you're watching Day or Night X. X is for Zodex, and this is another Q&A session. Countless colors sent these in, so one of my videos left some questions in the comment section. I told this person I will make a video for them and make sure that they get all the information they need. This is very, very basic questions, but questions I get more than any other questions. So let's dive right into them. As we take a look at Phantom, Pulseotheria striata, the Mysore ornamental. This is the molt. Now I'm going to refer to everything in this video very basic because I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you are a beginner. So I'm going to keep everything very basic. So we're going to be taking looks at images from uh, tranches in my collection. You can look at some molts from my collection. Uh, the uh, striata molt you see right here is actually one that I just happened to document the very day I was recording. Uh, this audio, so I thought I would throw that in there, but you'll see some other molts from uh, a couple other my tarantulas, as well as uh, some images from handling that I did in prior vids, and if you want to see the full vid of those, there'll be links in the description below, so if you want to see the entire vid of those handling vids, uh, you can uh, go down there and check those out on your own time, but we're going to stick to just the questions here, which is why I didn't want to record something and then be distracted with the with the animal or whatever so we just check out some images and some footage and uh, that may not line up perfectly with what I'm saying but you have something pleasant to look at while I'm talking about this subject let's get to question number one which was do tarantulas have control over their hairs and how do their hairs work in general the hairs themselves because these tarantulas are small, now a lot of people will look at them and refer to them as big spiders, but relatively speaking, tarantulas are not very big at all. Even even the biggest one is going to get 12 inches. If you're lucky, you may find a specimen of Goliath that can get up to 13. Some people say even 14, but I always say, you know, if you get a foot long tarantula, you think about that, that's not very big compared to a dog or a cat or some fish, things like that. Tarantulas just inherently don't get that large. So I think the hairs themselves, I think people have the stigma about it where it's almost like they don't want to look deeply at the tarantula because the hairs freak them out. But if you actually look at the hairs on them, they are not hairs. They're, they're called uricating hairs. And um, I also put a link in description to uh, um, last year's Halloween special that I, I did um, that covered uricating hairs on tarantulas. So if you want to know more about uricating hairs, Go down and check out that video because I, I go into detail on what they actually are. But the hairs themselves, they don't really look like hairs. To me, they are, not everybody sees something different, but they've always looked like more like to me like grass or wheat or something like that because they're just sticking straight up. They don't blow in the wind. If you had a, you know, if you could blow dry them, you wouldn't see this flowing locks of hair coming off of them. You know, so they actually look more like barbs or their, or uh, needles more than they do resembling hairs, so to speak. Now, different species obviously have different types of hairs, so depending on the species, I could change up how those hairs look. Now, um, I have uh, the Honduran curly hair footage in this video. Uh, those hairs look completely different than um, any of the, um, uh, like, Grandma Stola hairs, or if you're gonna get into uh, Formitipus uh, species, the Samaporis, uh, quote unquote hairs, they all look different. There's a difference between hairs and uricating hairs, so I advise you to go down and uh, check out that uh, video I have in the link in the description so you can learn a little bit more about uricating hairs because these hairs don't actually, um, they don't really work in any type of way. They're just on the tarantula's body and their purpose is very depending on the species and we'll get to that in a moment. Number two, are the hairs the same for each species and what do the hairs feel like? So just continuing off of what we were just talking about, the hairs themselves, I would say, let's just start with any species. The hairs, let's say on the rump, are gonna be completely different purpose-wise than the hairs that are on the legs, the hairs that are on the, uh, the, the pedipulse. If it's a mature male, we'll talk about uh, you know tibia hooks and stuff like that. Things have a purpose, obviously, for each tarantula, or they wouldn't be on the tarantula at all. Um, the hairs on the rump, You'll notice a lot of tarantulas, if you've seen uh, pictures of a lot of tarantulas, you see a big bald spot on their butt. Obviously that is uh, the hairs that are being kicked in defense from the tarantula when they feel they're in danger and they want to ward off someone who could potentially eat them or um, harm them in any type of way. They're going to let you know real quick that they're there. But not only that, the hairs themselves will irritate 
the uh, whatever it penetrates, especially if it's skin. Now, I can only speak for myself when it comes to what they feel like. Uh, let's say a tarantula, is, if, you're, if you're handling a tarantula in your hand and they're walking around, I don't necessarily feel the hairs more than I just feel the touch of the tarantula because their balance is always trying to make sure that they're they're well balanced. So it's almost like they're tippy-toeing around. So you really don't feel as much of the tarantula, tarantula as you may think when they're when you're handling them. And as far as them kicking hairs and things like that, with a lot of species, I would say my formictivus, um, excuse me, my Pamphibetes fortis would kick hairs all the time off of the rump, off of their legs, and you can actually see them go up in the, in the air. Well, this tarantula was five uh, inches at the time when I got it, and I think when uh, that tarantula died, it was almost eight inches. So you could see those hairs, and that species inherently has very long irritating hairs, so you could see those hairs. In my personal experience, the hairs themselves don't feel very good when you get them on you. And this goes back to a size of reference type of a deal. When I first got a lot of my tarantulas, they were really small, you know, half an inch, an inch, two inches. And obviously their hairs aren't going to be the same length of the, as an adult of that species. So I made the mistake quite a few times of not recognizing that even though I could not see the hairs, because some of them, most of them are microscopic, you cannot see them at all that when I would go into and clean the, the enclosure out, I would, wouldn't would wash my hands fully right afterwards or I'll just keep touching my face and that's where my irritation would come from. Uh, these hairs, when they get in your skin, at least in my experience, because everybody's different, but when those hairs got in my skin, they actually react to me. Uh, it, it's the, the reaction from the hairs themselves is almost instantaneous. Uh, my um, there, there'll be bumps that are kind of pus up and they will literally pop the moment I go to scratch them and leave an open wound that actually hurts like hell. Not every species that happens from, uh, again, some of my bigger specimens with bigger, uh, you know, ha longer hairs, obviously, like um, uh, the Acanthoscuria gina colata, hairs give me trouble, my Nandukomatis hairs give me trouble, my Pamphibetes fortis at the time gave me trouble, um, no Gramostola species give me trouble. A lot of the Brachypelmas give me trouble, which sucks because that's one of my favorite species, uh, one of my favorite genus out there, and I wish I could handle a lot of those teas more, but their hairs just give me so much trouble. So I've kind of stayed away from that. But as far as touching the hairs, uh, the tarantulas have very sensitive reactions when it comes to anything in their bodies, which is why you have to be, if you look at the handling footage in this video, I always just have my hand out and I'm not moving my fingers around like you would with a reptile or something. Those hairs are there for a reason and they react to things that they're, they're very, very sensitive. So if I was even to go to touch one of their legs or anything like that, you, you're, you're looking at either the tarantula is going to bolt from you or it's going to bite you or it's going to kick hairs or something defensive to let you know they don't like it. or again they're going to react in an unpredictable way and that's never a good thing so as far as just going to touch one of them even if the hairs don't give me trouble i personally don't recommend it i know people that do but um i personally don't like messing around with their limbs when they're out on my hands or even in the enclosures i kind of always use look at my trenches as if they're fish you know look but don't touch as often as possible Question number three, what does a tarantula feel like and what do they look and feel like underneath their bodies? Very simple, underneath their bodies is pretty much what you would expect from an, an insect or an arachnid. They look very skeletal underneath they, because all the limbs are working underneath and they are very delicate creatures. Again, I think a lot of people look at their size and equate a tarantula to something that is bulky, tough, sturdy, they are very fragile. Now you will have people out there who say that they're tougher than they actually are. Um, I I always go on what I know. And I've had a lot of experiences with tarantulas just in their enclosure. The closure was actually not that big and they've climbed the glass and, and fell off to the side and ruptured their, their abdomen from literally like a half an inch fall. So they are more delicate than what people believe. Uh, even with their molting process, that is a hard, strenuous thing on these animals, them going through a molt. It, because their bodies are so delicate, any little wrong limb is laying the wrong way and that molt could be fatal to them. So they are, are very delicate and I don't 
as far as what they feel like, again, when if you have one in your hand, you're going to immediately notice that the tarantula is going to try to push off away from you as much as possible, or they're going to lower their center of gravity towards you. And if that happens, that means they're on the move, so they're going to be moving a lot. So it really what it feels like is if you closed your eyes and then just kind of tickled your hand a little bit with um, like something small, something... Uh, something uh, you know wiry and, and, and uh, light like a um like if you just gently brush your hand with a q-tip or something like that it's it as light as you possibly could that's what it feels like they don't have a lot of weight to them even at their heaviest now obviously they have a presence to them it when they're on your hand you know that they're there it's a sensation that is really hard it's a sensation that is really hard to describe you really have to experience it for yourself because I so many people describe it differently but for me it's just a, a weird uh, it's a feeling of of an animal crawling on your hand <laughs> it's the only way I could put it it's like a, if you would shrink down your cat into the size of a tarantula and it was tiptoeing around in your hand that's what it feels like it just feels like a curious creature in your hand that has the capability of hurting you but if you have that trench on your hand, most likely you know that it's not, so you can enjoy the experience for what it is. And most of the time, they want to get off your hand as quickly as possible, so they're not really looking to do anything special on your hand other than web up a little bit and uh, just kind of sit there because they won't do anything. Most of the time, if they get comfortable enough, they're just going to lay on your hand. And at best, then at that point, you just have <laughs> a, a, basically a... Uh, what equivocates to like a little bit of a wet napkin laying on your hand. I mean, it's just something that has some weight to it, but it's not doing anything, basically. Question number four, how do their feet look and do they have claws? This is going to be a quick, easy answer. As you've seen in this footage already, their feet look like little pads with uh, uricating hairs on them. Uh, again, depending on the species, you might see more of that pad or less. Again, depending on the species and how much uricating hairs are, are covering the legs and going down to the feet. They do have what people call claws. Uh, they're, they look, they resemble more like little hooks or fangs actually on their, on their uh, the pads. And they work just like you would think they would work. Uh, they have little hooks and they, along with their uh, hairs, they can cling to things because again, tarantulas are very small. So to the naked eye, it doesn't look like they could do that. But if you actually look at it microscopically, the uh, the hooks, uh, if you want to call that, the claws on their on their feet, you can see how easily it would be for them to cling on to anything because of just the, the angle of the hooks themselves and the way that they position their legs. You understand very quick that because a lot of people think it, it must be magic. It, it's not magic. They're just literally hooking onto everything, and it's they have when you have eight legs doing it. Uh, yeah, you could walk up anything because you're hooking to everything and again their center of gravity and their balance and their reflexes they are very efficient animals and again i mean if you can cling to a wall and climb up and you now you're turning something that is a, like for humans we can only walk forward and backwards these guys can climb walls they can go on ceilings i mean their dimensions of what they can do is what makes them such fascinating creatures and why they have evolved over all this time to still be on this earth there's some of the oldest living creatures on earth and uh, there's a reason for it they have they are very adaptive and because there's such a wide range of species with them they are they're so interesting there's no end to their potential last and final question question number five can you pet a tarantula and how would they respond to it again we kind of cover this with handling but i'll go into this very quickly i Technically, yes. If you got a tarantula on your hand and it's big enough, let's say you have one that's four or five inches long uh, or, or larger, and that tarantula is docile enough where it would just sit on your hand and allow you to gently touch its carapace, which is um, what you would call their head or their body. Yes, I guess you could sit there if that tarantula wanted you, allowed you to do it to just kind of gently brush your finger on top of the carapace. I highly would I, I do not recommend that at all I, I think it, but again I have seen people do it each individual specimen in temperament varies so there are people out there who have insanely docile tarantulas that can do that I personally don't like telling people to do it because just like you are 
or me or any other human being or any other animal on the planet uh, those tarantulas are not programmed robots they do have bad days uh you know to us it may seem in instant consequential or something that small could have a quote-unquote bad day but they do get in moods they do get hungry they do uh get spooked they they're tarantulas so we have to keep that in mind so yes technically they can be pet but what they're going to get out of that is nowhere close to what you're going to get with a dog or a cat or something like that and i would even say uh because we have this the same conversation in the reptile community when it comes to ball pythons and leopard geckos and bearded dragons does my bearded dragon like to be pet on her chin she loves it and now i should and that's another thing they don't love it they tolerate it either way she allows me to do it and i know i'm never in danger uh, from my bearded dragon from petting her on the chin or rubbing her back same with my ball pythons they're ball pythons i can sit there and just rub all day long like they're a cat and they won't not move i have other ones if i tried to do that they would bite the hell out of me multiple times and and be uh you know coming at me every day if i tried to do that to them uh, i would break trust with them if i tried that so again we are talking about tarantulas here who do not have that type of brain capacity as a reptile so their response to you might not be something you enjoy because they could technically run fall and hurt themselves kill themselves you may lose them they might escape from you because you might spook them or worst case scenario they're going to turn around and bite you and we do know that you know tarantulas have just never been a tarantula that's killed someone unless i guess unless you're severely allergic to their uh, venom but they are venomous so uh, i mean you have to be extremely careful with that they do have fangs for a reason so i don't recommend people do that especially if you have one big enough to actually place your whole finger on their carapace that means their fangs are long enough to hurt you and or you could really me personally i think you're going to hurt them because if they bite you you're probably going to drop them so not only did you get bit you're probably going to kill your tarantula and it's not worth it just so you could say i can pet my tarantula so technically yes i recommend no but again, people do whatever they want with their tarantulas. There are a lot of different species out there. The, the old world tarantulas, I can't see somebody doing that with. Maybe some of the new worlds, I could see someone doing that with. If you uh, brought them up. I do have tarantulas. I have done it uh, to the first tarantula I've, I've ever owned. She does allow me to do it. But I'm talking I only do it once. And that's it. I wouldn't sit there for an hour doing it. But I do, again, take the approach of looking at my tarantula collection like the fish i only really try to interact with them physically if i have to touch them if i have i hope that helps you if you have any more questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and that goes for any beginner again this video was geared towards people who didn't know anything about these tarantulas that's how i approached it so obviously if you know all this stuff you know it very basic information i highly recommend getting the tarantula keepers guide if you are this serious about knowing more about it because i just flew through this and it takes years to know everything and i don't know everything about these tarantulas and i've been doing this um, for a long time now so i highly recommend just getting a good book i recommend the tarantula keepers guide that's what i learned the most from when i first got my first tarantula and they'll go in detail with everything that you need to know but for the purposes of answering questions always when somebody asks me to make a video i try to do it for you i hope that answers all your questions uh countless colors and for the rest of you who uh, tuned into this and if it helped you um let me know what you think below in the comment section does it, if you have an order tarantula does it change your mind uh either way let me know let everyone else know what you think see you guys next time take care